The subject that helped propel former President Trump into the White House and may be one of the biggest challenges facing President Biden now. What to do about the crisis at the border? Right now, senior DHS officials telling ABC News there is a significant surge of migrants crossing illegally into the U.S. Today, we learned the 13 people killed in a horrific crash in California Tuesday were smuggled through a hole in a border fence before their SUV packed with 25 people collided into a semi-truck a short time later. Our cameras have been on the ground along the Texas-Mexico border in recent days, seeing the crisis firsthand. This as the White House is floating sweeping changes to our immigration system. Our Matt Gutman leads us off tonight with the desperate families seeking a better life and the overwhelmed Border Patrol agents trying to contain the surge. The helicopter circled low, skimming the treetops. Border Patrol agents dove into the brush. Helicopters flying low. There are a number of vans here to pick up a group of migrants that apparently smuggled across the border and is hunkered down inside this orchard somewhere. It took officials about half an hour to find the 16 migrants they said were hiding in this orchard. And there, on the side of a highway hugging the Rio Grande, they were ordered to remove the few things they carried. So what you're seeing is um, these migrants being told to take off their shoelaces. That's something that they have to do before they're taken into custody. Um, no belts, no shoelaces. More came filing out of the brush, the foliage from their hiding places clinging to their clothes. Border Patrol officers and police asked if they needed water. The new detainees weren't cuffed. They were just loaded up and driven out. It's a process that has become remarkably efficient because it has to be. Mexico border now experiencing what senior DHS officials tell ABC News is a significant surge of crossings. The Biden administration has so far not permitted the Border Patrol to grant interviews or ride-alongs with the media, but the border is so active right now, especially near McAllen, Texas, that simply following Border Patrol traffic can lead reporters to apprehensions. And it was near the hamlet of La Jolla, beneath the hulking wall, that we encountered this group, about 40 migrants, according to Border Patrol, with children in tow. And as we walked up right there, the entire family weeping. These people are crying right now because they are afraid that they're going to be sent back to their country. Mauricio and Marie Cruz and their children, Jesse and Danis, are seeking asylum in the U.S. They say it's been a 15-day journey. There was a train ride, cramped car rides, and a $5,000 fee to coyotes. Por favor, they're saying, please don't, don't send us back. They showed us the neatly folded note pulled from that Ziploc, their lifeline, the phone number of a family member in Baltimore. The towering wall of steel pikes now acts as a giant catch basin for migrants crossing the Rio Grande onto U.S. soil, but who can get no farther north than the wall. Death has always been a hazard of this voyage, but over the past two years for asylum seekers, political purgatory on the Mexican side of the border has been another hazard. Crossing the border, we visited this encampment of asylum seekers in Matamoros, Mexico. Beneath these tarps and behind this concertina wire are about 700 migrants. They are just some of the 25,000 migrants that have been waiting, some of them for up to two years for their chance to have their cases heard in the U.S. They were in this place because of the Trump administration's remain in Mexico policy, ordering that instead of waiting for court hearings in the U.S., most asylum seekers would be forced to wait in Mexico. But then came COVID. Immigration courts closed, and that wait for families like Blancas and Jonathan's seemed indefinite. Last month, a record ice storm slammed Texas and northern Mexico, and they froze in flimsy blankets, seeing ice form outside for the first time in their lives. They also revealed the frightful risk the couple took in mid-January, crossing illegally into the U.S. on the day Blanca gave birth to their son, Jonathan Jr., all so that their infant would be stamped with a lifelong designation, U.S. citizen. But within three days, they were expelled right back to Mexico. They waited through the cold and the thick heat of summer in a camp which hugs the Rio Grande, the U.S. on the other side, tantalizingly close. But the Biden administration has been quietly rolling back restrictions. Last Thursday, Jonathan and Blanca were able to cross into Brownsville, Texas, legally. 
Every day, that Matamoros encampment gets smaller. We watched as a human rights lawyer explained to dozens of asylum seekers how the process would go. And on Tuesday, we caught up with Jonathan again. He was staying at a motel in Brownsville. It was cramped, but they had beds and heat and food. He told us the news. They were going to fly to Boston to be with their family. What kept Jonathan and Blanca in Mexico is part of what Homeland Security Chief Alejandro Mayorkas calls the broken U.S. immigration system. It takes time to build out of the depths of cruelty that the administration before us established. What we are see seeing now at the border is the immediate result of the dismantlement of the system and the time that it takes to rebuild it virtually from scratch. Changes that were already visible in Brownsville's bus station. Officials here told us these folks were recently apprehended along the border and then released from Border Patrol custody with a promise that they would show up for immigration hearings. Now, and at the station, they were being processed, but first tested for COVID. Since you've been here, on average, what is the percent positive of the people coming across from Mexico? Let's say from the most, most that I have uh, tested, like around 116, and from those, at least 30 are positive. Wow, so you've had days where 30, almost like 25% of the people coming across are COVID positive. Yes. Wow. Is, is that surprisingly high? Is that? Well. That's a high positivity yes, it's a, it's rate. A high. Administration officials say they don't have room for all the migrants they've apprehended, especially with COVID social distancing requirements. The backlog growing with the enormous influx of unaccompanied minors. And we saw evidence of that back at that Border Patrol operation near McAllen, Texas. This young man saying he was from Honduras. DHS officials tell ABC News about 9,000 unaccompanied children and teens crossed into the U.S. just in the month of February. And now officials are asking the Biden administration to help them prepare 20,000 beds for minors crossing illegally, most of them from Central America. The administration says this means it has been forced to house these youth in temporary shelters because of COVID and the need to vet their sponsors. In some cases, those are the very same facilities created by the Trump administration. And to the migrants still heading north, as Mauricio and Marie Cruz had done, the administration asking for patience from all those. We are not saying don't come. We are saying don't come now because we will be able to deliver um, a safe and orderly process to them uh, as quickly as possible. Meantime, today was a momentous day for Blanca and Jonathan and their family, their first time on a plane, headed to a place that until this week had sounded unimaginably distant, Boston, hoping that like the baby in Blanca's arms, they too one day could call themselves American citizens. Matt Gutman, ABC News, McAllen, Texas. Our thanks to Matt Gutman for that report. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.